This is another fluid mechanics problem out of the Bunsen textbook, so it's 2.8.12. And I kind of like this problem because um, just the situation is a little different than what you usually see. So this one we've got looks like a Jeep or something. It was dropped into a river. Uh, the car door is approximately a, a rectangle and measures 36 inches wide, which it shows here, 40 inches high, and it has hinges on a vertical side. All right, so it doesn't show you which side, but that didn't really matter. Um, the water level inside the car is up to the mid-height of the door, so that's important, right, mid-height. And the air inside the car is at atmospheric pressure. So we want to calculate the force required to open the door if the force is applied 24 inches from the hinge line. All right, so there's the 24 inches right there. Okay, so that is kind of what we're looking at. So we want to find the force that's being applied to open the door. Okay, and we're assuming the force is coming from the inside of the car. So first of all, let's, let's kind of look and see what's going on here. Um, so let's look inside the car. All right, so inside the car, if this is our door, it's going, the water is going up halfway, right? So if it's halfway, the door is 40 inches long. So halfway would be 20 inches. All right, so we got 20 inches here. And then this is 36 inches. Okay, so keep this in mind. So this is inside. This up here is just air, right? And this down here is the water. Now, if we think about it, um, let's think about where our hinges would be. Let's just say the hinges are over here, I guess. doesn't really matter. Um, we're going to be pushing on this door, right? On the opposite side of the door from the hinges, so 24 inches away from the hinge line. Okay, so let's just say that that's like right here. So this is inside the car. Now, outside the car, we've got you know, different scenario, right? Because outside the car, the entire door is covered with the water, right? So this is 40 inches. This is still 36. Okay, so now we've got that. Now, how can we put all this together? So I want to find the force that's going to be applied right here. Okay, well, I need to figure out how to put all this together in one diagram. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to look from above. All right, so let's like look at the top of the door and we're going to look down. Okay, and let's say the hinge axis is here. And we know our force, let's say this is the inside of the door. So our force is going to be right here. And we know that that's 24 inches from the hinge because that's what it said, you know, right here. And what else do we have? What else needs to go in here? Well, what about the water, right? We've got force due to the water, okay, that's acting on the door. So I've got the force due to the water inside the door, okay, so we've got that. And then I've got the force due to the water outside of the door. Now those are different amounts, right? Because we've got different levels of water. So we need to put both of those on this diagram. Now let's do the inside one first. So let's just say this is Fn for inside. Now where is that going to act? Well, it's going to act in the center, right? Somewhere. I don't really care about the height. I just care about the horizontal component here. So it's going to act at the center. So this um, right here is going to be 36 over 2, right? Because this is 36. I want halfway. So that gives me 18 inches. And it goes against the door. Now outside, we're going to have the same thing, right? So we got our force on the outside. It's going to be right in the center. All right, again, I don't really care where the, where the vertical height is at this point. And this one is also 18 inches. Okay, because the 36 inches is consistent for both of these. 
All right, so now I've got that. And technically the hinge, um, you would have you know an AY and an AX. So you'd have both of those. Okay, now what we wanna do is we wanna find F. That's what we're looking for. All right, so F equals something. We need to figure out what it is. In order to do that, I have to know what the inside force is and then the outside force. So let's go ahead and let's find both of those. Let's do inside first. All right, now these are like horizontal forces, right? We're just looking from above. Okay, so they're pushing into the door. So they would be horizontal forces. So our equation would be gamma HC times A. All right, remember this is uh, rho times G there. Our fluid is water, obviously. Um, we're dealing in inches and feet, so this is going to be the English unit system. So gamma for water would be 62.4, and that's pounds per cubic foot. Okay, so that takes care of gamma. Now we need HC. Remember what HC is. HC is the vertical distance from the top of the fluid to the centroid of the area that's in contact with the fluid. Okay, that's what HC is. So if we look inside, let's look at this diagram, our HC, the color here, HC is going to be, you know, let's just say right here. We're measuring from the top portion here, this the water line. All right, so top of the water line, we're going to measure down to the centroid of the area in contact with the fluid. So if this is 10 inches tall, where it's in contact with the fluid, the centroid would be right here, right? So that one would be what distance? 10, right? So this is going to be my HC. So that's going to go in here, so 10 inches. And then we have A, so area there is the area that's in contact with the fluid. So inside of the car, that's going to be this area right here. Okay, so that's going to be 20 inches times 36. And that's how we get that force due to the water inside of the vehicle. Okay, now do you see anything we need to do here? I've got a unit problem, right? I've got cubic feet and then I've got all these inches. So I need to convert here. Um, let's do it over here. So I'm going to go ahead and um, get rid of the feet, switch over to inches. And to do that, we're going to have one foot per 12 inches. Let me erase this. And then we're going to cube that. All right, so remember when you do this, you have to do, divide by 12 cubed, okay? So that, though, will take care of our units, and then we'll be left with pounds, which is a unit of force, which is what we want. All right, so that gives me 260 pounds. Okay, so this is 260 pounds. And now we need to do the same thing for the outside. All right, so same equation, because again, this is a horizontal force. This diagram doesn't make it look like that because this is looking down on top of the door. Okay, so gamma for water is still 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. HC, remember, is measured from the top of the water to the centroid of the area in contact with the water. Okay, so let's look here. Now, I know a lot of people are thinking HC should be from here to here, right? You're thinking it should be 20, but that's not right. And let's see why that is. So if we look over here, we're on the outside of the door. So let's say this is, you know, 20 right here. Okay, but notice where the water starts. It starts up here, all right? Because remember these little triangles show you where the water starts. So that means I got to go all the way from here to this dot where the centroid is. So I need this distance. Okay. So I need four feet plus the 20 inches. Okay. 
So obviously you got two different units there, so we'll have to convert something. Um, but that's going to be your HC. So we're going to have four feet. Let's switch that to inches, so 12 inches per foot, plus the 20 inches. Okay, That gives us HC because you always got to measure from the top of the water column. All right. So on the outside of the car, the water goes all the way up to here. Inside the car, that wasn't the case, right? Because you had air up here. And it just started halfway uh, at the door right here. Okay, now area. What would we put for area on the outside? Well, we're looking at just the door, right? But this whole outside area of the door is in contact with the water. So that means we're going to have 36 inches times 40 inches. Okay. Now obviously we expect a lot more uh, force on the outside of the door because we get a lot more water. And that is what we get. We get 3,536 pounds. Okay, so way more water um, giving us a force than what we had in here. So the force is a lot bigger. Okay, so now we know what this is. And now we are ready to solve for F, okay, because that's what we want. Now again, if I take the moment at A, I don't have to worry about these hinge forces, right? So let's take the moment at A there. Counterclockwise is going to be positive. And let's just start with F here. All right, is that going to be positive or negative? I think that is going to be positive, right? Because if I apply this force, it's counterclockwise. So we have F, and then the distance from this force to A is 24 inches. And so multiply by 24. Then let's look at the inside force. So that's 260. Distance is 18. And by the way, that's in pounds. And should that be positive or negative? Well, that's going to be positive too, right? Because it's still going to go counterclockwise. It's positive. And then finally, this out, you know, outside the door force. So that's 35, 36 pounds. That distance again is 18 inches. And now that one is going to be negative, right? Because it goes like that clockwise. So we put a negative there. And that's all we have to worry about because AX, AY, they go through the um, point we're taking the moment about. So we don't have to worry about a moment created by those two forces. So now we can set that equal to zero because everything's in equilibrium. And now we can solve for F. All right, so F then, which is the force that has to be applied inside the door, uh, is going to be 2,457 pounds. All right. So I thought that was a pretty interesting problem because you had to look inside the car and then outside the car, um, and you had to really know what HC was and what this area needs to be in order to get that correct. All right. Hopefully, I'll like that one. I will see y'all next time for another problem.